we have, um, just to make it very stark, we have a box of soup. And this happens to be a soup secrets, noodle soup, Lipton soup. We have a, a can of soup mix. So we have a box of dry soup mix and a can of, su of soup mix. And this happens to be minestrone. And we happen to have a bottle of four cups of water. In terms of ingredients, we have uh, one uh, dry uh, soup mix of um, noodle soup. And we have one can soup mix of minestrone. And we have one uh, bottle with four cups of water. And then we also have the process, the production process, which your textbook calls um, technology. Okay, and so when their textbook says technology, they don't mean just the, the technical part, you know, the computer part, but they in general mean the production process, <coughs> we call it technology. So we have the, um, but in this case, we're talking about ingredients, so let me say the recipe. Okay? And the recipe is one dry mix with four cups of water yields four cups of noodle soup, four cups of noodle soup. And then one can mix with four cups of water gives you six cups of minestrone. So we have, in general, we wouldn't call them ingredients, we would call them resources. And we wouldn't call it recipe, we would call it, again, production process or technology. But uh, basically, this is what describes where we're at. We're in an island. It's not the island from Lost, so it's not like magical stuff is happening. It's, it's just a bare island, and this is what we have. And with what we have, we have to decide what we're going to do. But the way we're going to do it is we're going to list our choices. The way we're going to list our choices is with a production table. And the way we're going to list our production table is we're going to list how much we can do of each. Okay? And we're going to say noodle soup. Noodle soup. And minestrone. And I'm going to post something online next week for you to practice how to make a production table. Because again, it's, I, I want you to get rid of the arithmetic because that's not what I'm trying to teach you. So I need you to, to learn the arithmetic and get it out of the way so you can concentrate on the economic topics. So, but let me do that right now. So how much noodle soup and how much minestrone can you do? And the easiest way you can do a production table is look at the extremes. And I'm going to write the extremes in the first line and the other extreme in the last line, okay? And then I'll look at the in-betweens. Then I'll look at the in-betweens. So let me start with one extreme. What do I mean by the extreme? I mean all noodle soup and no minestrone. Okay, let's do that. So we mix the four cups of water with the dry soup mix. And if I mix the four cups of water with the dry soup mix, I get how many cups of minestrone? I'm sorry, how many cups of noodles? Four. Four. And how much cups of minestrone? Six. Zero. Zero. Uh, I'm mixing it with the noodle soup. Okay. So this production table is based off the amount of water you have? Based on my ingredients, my resources. But minestrone is already made. No, 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 that's a mix. It's a concentrate. Oh, it's concentrate, okay. Yes, yes. Sorry, I thought it was a pre-mix. One can soup mix of minestrone concentrate. Okay. Okay, good question. Good question. Okay. But since it, it already has water, it is, uh, you know, it that's has what I was wondering. Yeah. Can. That's why you get six, six. cups when you. Yeah. Okay. 
and if I have to be totally honest, my recipe doesn't match exactly what's in the box, but bear with me, <laughs> I'm trying to make a point here, but, um, but good point. Okay, so the canned soup mix is concentrate. And so if I mix all the water with a can of soup, and I'm going to write it at the bottom line, okay, at the bottom of my table, the last line, I get no noodle soup and six cups of minestrone. Easy enough. And then if you do it that way, then it's easy because you can plot it in between. You can plot it in between. And you say, well, you don't have to do one or the other. You can do half-half. And so if you mix half the water with the dry mix and half the water with the can concentrate, you would get two cups of noodle soup and three cups of minestrone. Okay? And again, I did it on purpose, one a dry mix, one a concentrate in a, in a can, so I wouldn't get the same numbers in between. But it is still, you will notice that the recipe, it's still constant for a half a box or the full box. The same recipe applies. When you're cooking and, and the recipe calls for 12 people and you're only cooking for six, it's easy, right? You just cut the recipe in half. And that's what I'm doing here. It doesn't always happen, and I'll talk about that in very few minutes so I can finish at 8.45. But, but here it is happening. It's a rest, our, 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 our resources, our ingredients, and our production process, our technology is a recipe, so it applies. And you can go in between. You can go, well, one, once you have the numbers, then it's easy. The arithmetic is easy. You just say, well, one cup, cup of this, and uh, uh, be four and a half cups of that. Okay? Or I can do three cups of minestrone, and the remaining would be for the min I'm sorry, three cups of noodle soup, and the remaining for the minestrone, and that would be one half cup of minestrone. Okay. If this were a sewing class, we would um, learn how to thread a needle. This is an economics class. You will learn how to graph. Okay. I'm going to be free drawing stuff on the board. You're not going to be free drawing in the homework. You're going to use a ruler. Okay. And you're going to be very, very specific, but uh, you're going to put labels everywhere. And um, so this is what I call the production possibilities. Here, let me put a heading. Production possibilities for soup. Okay. And here I put noodle soup. And here I put minestrone. It doesn't matter which one you put on the vertical axis, which one you put on the horizontal axis. Okay, I don't care. And then we'll graph it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Again, in your case, you're going to pull out a ruler because if these are changing by ones, then the distance between those tick marks better be the same. And for that, you need a ruler. And students will often ask me, oh, it has to be perfect. No, it doesn't have to be perfect. But if I notice that it's off from a distance, I'm not going to pull a ruler on from you. But if I notice that it's off from a distance, then it's off. Okay, so if I notice that it's off, that these distances are not the same to the naked eye, remember I use glasses, then, then I'm going to cut points on you. The, the concept is the graph. I need you to learn how to read graphs. And the only way I know how to teach you how to read graphs is to teach you how to draw. Okay, noodle and minestrone. Four cups and no minestrone. Four cups of noodles and zero minestrone is that point. Three cups of noodles and one and a half cup minestrone is this point. Two cups of noodles and three cups of minestrone, one cup of noodle, and four and a half cups of minestrone, zero cups of noodles, all minestrone would be six, right? Six cups of minestrone and, and no noodles. Minestrone measured in cups. Noodles measured in cups. We connect the points with a smooth line, which in this case will be a straight line, and that's what we get. This graph, this picture worth a thousand words, shows you how much we can produce.